Welcome. So uh, this talk is about uh, Datomic. Um, my name is Krishna Razati Maifa. I work at uh, EPFL Extension School half time, and uh, the, uh, the rest of the time I work with uh, Lambda Forge, uh, German company. Uh, before I start, I'd like to know actually how many of you have heard about uh, Datomic. And how many of you have used maybe that of it? Uh, why? <laughs> okay. And closure? Uh, the same people. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, what I'd like to do in this presentation is to, uh, to introduce you to, uh, to that of it. And also to, um, to show you what, uh, what surprised me when I, uh, when I started working on that of it. So what is Datomic? Datomic is a modern database created by this guy, Richie Key. Uh, he's quite a prolific guy, he also invented Clojure and uh, Clojure Script. Uh, if you have the occasion to uh, watch any of these talks, it's, uh, it's always very interesting. So I really recommend to, uh, to try one of, his, one of his talks. So Datomic is, uh, is a relational database. Uh, it supports uh, joins. It has uh, AC transaction, so it's pretty much like a uh, traditional database that you have with, uh, we have today with the Postgres or MySQL. But there is a little bit more than that. So, um, so what's so surprising about that only? So first of all, there's only one writer thread. So we are in 2019 and I'm starting the presentation and I'm telling you, yeah, this is a great database, but it only has one writer thread. <laughs> Whereas, like, Intel, I think, announced that they have, like, 28 cores in their next uh, processor. Um, yeah, so, so why is it that uh, in their design, Datomic has only one writer thread? So, to understand why, there is this paper um, written by Stonebreaker and, uh, and Co where they investigated where, what was really happening inside a traditional database like, uh, like Postgres, where the time is spent uh, in the database when, they, when somebody wants to write something on the, in the database. So what they come up is, is that uh, only 25% of the time is really spent writing data in Postgres, MySQL, the rest of the time, it's spent on uh, synchronizing all the writers and the readers, mostly, and also some, uh, some different tasks needed by the database, like the B3 management and logging and stuff like that. So in that week, they decided, OK, well, we have this 75% 70, of the time that's left. And if you use only one thread, then we don't have to deal with all the synchronization problem. Um, and this way we can use the full time of the thread only for writing. <coughs> so what Datomic does is that it just uh, takes um, the data that uh, clients send to the, to the backend and uh, just linearize the data and store it. So performance wise, you might think, uh, okay, just one thread, maybe it's not enough. Well, for typical uh, web application that uh, most of us is here are doing, I guess, it's more than enough. We spend a lot more time reading than writing. And unless you really want to like, uh, write gazillions uh, amount of data in Datomic, then maybe Datomic is not the right choice. But for a traditional web app, it's really good enough. Uh, another surprising fact about Datomic is that uh, all the querying and the reading is done on the client. That's completely different from what you're used to with uh, Postgres, for instance, where you always have to, uh, you have a server and you get the data from the server. In Datomic, the database is in your client machine. It's in the process of your application. So this is the typical architecture of a Datomic database. So I won't enter into all the details, but basically, at the top, you have the client part, and at the bottom, you have the server part. So we can see that in the client part, you have the, uh, the application. That's the application process, and we have the query module, 
and all this is the data. So the data and the query model reside inside the application process. And everything else is just sending the data that you want to write into the server part where it's stored. It's capable of uh, having this architecture because, because, because of uh, immutability, basically. So that's the big point of uh, the big selling point of closure, database closure scripts, and uh, a lot of functional programming uh, languages. It's immutability. Uh, what does immutability mean? It means that um, there is never any place replacement of the value. You create a value in your system, and it's there. It's never going to change. So in Datomic, um, each time you write, you create new values. You just keep adding new values into the system. You never update a value uh, in place, and you never delete a value, basically. So if you so um, conceptually, what happens is if you if you want to modify a, a value, you take the old version of the value, which you, which you cannot change, make a copy of it. And in the copy, you, 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 you update what you want to, to change. So that's conceptually. But um, what's really done is that uh, you have the, somebody invented this uh, persistent data structure. Um, and it's really efficient. It does that. It does the copy and the update, but in a very efficient manner. So yeah, because, because the data is uh, completely immutable, then you can, uh, what you write in the server, you can take it back to the client, because it will never change, and you don't have to worry about, uh, about concurrency and stuff like that. And so you can put the read on the client and the write on the server. So again, because of immutability, so the, the data never changes, and each time you do a query on, the, on that version of the database, you will always get the same result. It's like uh, in functional programming, uh, you have a function, you, put a, you, you give it an input, you always get the same result as the output if the function is pure. But here, it's more like a, it's really a database. You get the value of your database, and you query it, and uh, given the arguments of the query, you always get the same result at the end. Uh, so, also because of immutability, it keeps track of all the changes that you had. So you have a complete history of what happened in your database for free. Plus auditability if uh, that's something you need. And uh, about the history, um, in many projects that I've participated in, actually you might think, yeah, well, I don't need the history. Just a lot of waste in the database, but often you are uh, at some point, you realize, oh, well, it would have been good if I could have the history of really what happened to this row in my, in my database. And then you have to go and uh, change it yourself with a, with a relational database, a typical one. But with Datomic, uh, you don't have to do that. It's there. And because of this uh, immutability property, it's also often uh, known as uh, the git of databases shares the same principle, immutability, you can fork and create a, another version of the, of the database. But we'll see that uh, later. So coming back to the fact that uh, you can read the, the database from your client process. So one of the advantages is that you can scale. You can just get the copy of the database and put it in as many clients as you want. It's, the, it's for free. And also you gain a lot of speed because the database is now in the memory of the application. Um, you don't have to do all this synchronization anymore between the writers and the readers. You're only reading. And also, compared to traditional databases, you don't send a query, which is usually a string to the server, actually. So there's no latency. You're really just accessing the data from the, from memory, and also this removes all the n plus one problem that you have with uh, PostgreSQL, MySQL. Yeah, here again, you can do as many uh, 
cost as you want, it's going to be just the cost of a memory access and not sending a string to retrieve one element and then sending again another string to retrieve the second element. Okay, so yeah, <coughs> another uh, surprising fact is that there are no tables in that learning process. It uses uh, what's called datums. Um, there are relations, a triple, made of, uh, the first element is called the entity, it's usually an ID, and then there's the attribute part, which describes what the entity is, and the value that you associate to the, to the entity. If you want, it's really just describing facts, and I have two examples here. So this is a database with two facts, uh, and the fact says, Paul, an entity, likes the attribute music, or Paul, for the name is Simon. So everything in the database is just this, uh, a set of triple that, uh, that's stored. And it's the same concept that is used in uh, RDF, semantic web, I don't know if some of you knows about that. Um, but in the semantic web, you just use the terms subject, predicate, and object for doing exactly the same thing, storing facts. Um, that topic, it's actually, to be more precise, it's not a triple, it's a five total. You have the entity, attribute, and values, like in RDF, but in that topic, you have these two, two columns in addition. The transaction ID, which is going to give us the time when the data was added into that topic. And uh, also a boolean, which indicates if it's uh, addition of the data in that topic of, uh, or a retraction. A retraction is the way for you to uh, remove data from the database. You don't really physically remove the row, but you say this is a new row that's uh, going to uh, supersede the previous row that was there. That was there. So, um, yeah, one, another thing to notice is that in the value part of the, of the datum, you can have a reference to another datum, like for this example. Uh, this entity which describes the movie director. The movie director is stored in the datum 167, which is the line script. So this gives you the join that you have in a relational database. You can join a datum with other datum. In datomic, there is this notion of uh, entity and uh, what it means is basically, if I take the, the previous example, which I put back here, it's basically an entity is everything, every datum that shares the same entity ID. So in this example, I have three uh, entities, this one, this one, and this one. You can think of them vaguely as, uh, as objects, but they are not at all uh, objects in the object-oriented sense. But. Okay, another thing that I found surprising when I started working with Datomic is that the data and the indices, they're exactly the same. So the data or the data is the indice, the index, and the index is the data. So you just, in the database internally, sorry, it really just stores uh, the data like this, it shows. It's, it's at the same time the index, but also the data. So you don't, you have a separation between uh, the index which points to the data like you have in uh, Postgres or MySQL. And again, it's going to be given for you for free. This concept of having indices and data being the same, it's called uh, covering index indexes. And in Datomic, the, uh, there are four kinds of indexes that you, you get for free. So there's the first one where you first store the, the entity ID, then the attribute, then the value, and then the transaction ID. And there's another one where you start by putting the attribute first, then the entity ID, then the value, and all the different possibilities. So this way, if you, if you have a query, which needs the, a query about the attributes, then you have this, so you can use this index starting with the attributes to make your query faster. 
Yeah, they are there, EABT, EVAT, AVT, and uh, AVAT. And in Datomic, uh, the data is not really stored by Datomic. That was an interesting uh, story. Okay. <laughs> it's like uh, it delegates everything to, uh, to whatever you want, Postgres, Postgres, or Cassandra. So they don't want to deal with the durability problem. It's a problem which is already solved. They just put uh, what they call a transactor in the server, and the transactor talks to Postgres, sends the data to be written there. It's basically this file. You have the transactor. You just receive the what you want to write, and then there's a storage service which can be any other uh, rational or um, NoSQL database. So if we were to look at the, the underlying database, would that look like a traditional relational database or it's stored with a completely different model? No, I think it's gonna, it's gonna store it uh, with rows in the traditional model when you use Postgres, for instance. I, I am working on uh, storing the indexes for uh, Foundation DB, which is a database from Apple, and uh, I just store the thing one after the other. But maybe they do it differently in Postgres or so. But you have to tell uh, Datomic how to store the data to persist, to make this data, data durable. You have to uh, do it yourself or Datomic is taking care. You just say, hey, Datomic, use yeah, this Postgres uh, database here and do what you Yeah, I think the Datomic guys already wrote the, the bridge and how they store it in terms mm -hmm. you, you clearly don't do it as a, as a user. Just say, I want Postgres. Um, also, what's a bit different from, uh, at least from the NoSQL database, is that there is a schema. Like MongoDB, you just create your documents, put whatever you want in there, and store them. In, uh, in Datomic, you, you define a schema. And the schema basically is just uh, there to define the properties of your attributes. So I have an example here which will make it clearer. So if I suppose I have this data in the, in the database, and I have all these attributes, which are there, the name, AK, and child. And actually, my schema describes what uh, different properties of the attributes. So for the name, for example, I want to only store strings in the name attribute. The same for uh, AK. And the child is a ref, which means that what I can store as a value in the, in the child attribute is always a reference to another that home. And then there's this notion of cardinality, which means that for a given entity, uh, if the cardinality is one, then I can only have the I can only have the attribute name appear once per uh, per entity. But if it's many, I can have for this entity, for instance, I can have two attribute child. So just to make a one-to-one -one relationship between the entities or a one to many. schema is really flexible. So you can, you can store um, entities which describe a movie, for instance these two, that you can describe in a movie. But you can see that uh, the attributes that I use in the two entities, they are completely different. Well, they are not completely different, but there's a difference here. So I'm, that bit doesn't uh, enforce anything there, you can put any attribute you want into an entity, actually. So it makes the it makes it very flexible, and it makes it allows you, for instance, to grow your uh, your application organically. You don't really have to do migration. You just say, ah, oh, okay, well, now we need this new attribute, and you add the attributes uh, into your entity. So, so does that mean that the schema for movie would be title, year, and director? Um, the schema for uh, no, the schema for this database will have you have to describe every every attribute, each attribute. So, so yeah, in two, three, four, you have title and year. Yeah. Right, and the other one you have title and director. Yeah. So the 
is the overall scheme a all three, right? Title, year, and director, or how does that work? Yeah, total year, title, year, and director, yeah. Oh, so it has a scheme that they're optional. Uh, no, you have to be, define all the attributes that appear. But not, I mean, um, title appears twice, I don't know if that's your question, but you define only one. Title has to be uh, of that string. It's movie title. Ah, okay, that's okay. Um, and when you say schema, I thought you meant the, the movie entity would be made up of those attributes. No, you don't say that, actually. That's the point. You don't say that. You just say the attributes. Yep. This attribute has this property, okay. but you don't talk about entity at all. Okay. Yeah, but maybe some entity yes. can have multiple yeah. titles yeah. and other can have only one title, yeah. no? Well, that depends on how you, uh, you design your, uh, your application. You could, you say the title is a uh, cardinality many. Yeah. An entity will be able to have multiple titles. Yeah, but uh, I think the question is, um, you have to see that here the name is movie slash title. So in your case, you would have movie slash title, you would say cardinality many. Some title and this kind of okay. would be one. And then I, uh, two times the, yeah. the title, but um, it's actually two different attributes. Yeah. So it's solved by a naming convention, actually. Yeah, yeah it's an M space, actually. From the because the schema does not describe entities, is it right? Yeah. Only attributes. Only attributes, right? Yeah. It's like type casting for more, more than. No. Uh, you try a type plus plus determinality. Yeah, 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 you define a type. Yeah. 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 And the uh, attribute name, that's completely arbitrary, right? I can, instead of slashes, use, I don't know, yeah. underscores, dashes, yeah. whatever I want. Yeah, you don't have to have a slash. It yeah. just has to begin with double. Yeah, it? that's oh. a closure convention, yeah. yeah. Sorry, um, based on a previous slide, you said the case that is immutable. Yeah. And I was wondering if this immutability goes up to the structure of the, of the uh, In Datomic, yes, in Datomic actually they, they store this uh, schema, you, you, as you can notice, it's also a triple key. So it's stored as uh, inside Datomic also as entities, which is, uh, yeah, so it becomes immutable by, by default also. And if you want to change it, you, you just have to, uh, to say I want to uh, retract my previous version and this is my new version. Um, okay, I'm, I'm probably stays as is like for its length of time. So like yeah. People do. Like in the case of the movie, what if I want to add the ranking later, for example, like rating. Yeah. Like rating later, okay. And then I have already set a set of data that is stored in the database, which does not include rating. And and then the schema has changed, but the data didn't change, but the data is immutable. So I'm kind of like wondering how this can be dealt with. But maybe well, if I understand well, then what you could do is to add a new attribute, describing what you want, and then... The data, if the data is immutable, right? Like, if I actually add a record right now, but the record does not include rating for the movie. Yeah. Now, in the future version of the application, I decided to change the schema. Yeah. I was wondering if the schema is immutable or not, and then how does the engine, or my understanding, how does it deal with with with, uh, with the change in the schema? Well, you are, you just add new attributes. Yeah, That's how you evolve the schema. I already have data which is immutable, right? Well, you also have to. If you really need to, you you also need to update your data. It's not because it's immutable that you don't uh, update the data. You just add the new rows in the database that uh, replaces the, the previous ones if you need to, with the new attributes I'm that you have defined. If I want to go back in history, but. This is why I'm saying like maybe this is the time for actually. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's your, your question is the suppose uh, the history applies to the schema and if you go back in history, do we yeah. apply apply previous uh, schema in history? Yeah. Also. Another question.
question? I've got a couple, but I'll wait for the end. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, another interesting point is that you can see uh, Datomic as a relational database, a graph database, or a columnar database. Okay. Like you can model any of these actually if you want. And that's because, well, the relational is, you have seen, you can do joins, it supports the relational algebra. It has a C transaction. For graph, um, basically what makes a graph database powerful is that you can connect any nodes to any other nodes, even if they're um, of completely different type. Um, so the example is, uh, for instance, if you have a mapping between a country and a regional structure, if, uh, let's say, it, uh, in Switzerland you have canton and commune, whereas in France we have département and région. And if you, if you use a graph database, you can just say, okay, give me the instance of Switzerland, of the country Switzerland, and then I just link it to an instance of uh, Canton, which is Geneva. I uh, do the same thing for an instance of France, and then associate it directly with an instance of, uh, of, uh, of a department. If you have to modelize that with a um, rational database, it's a lot, more to, a lot more work. You would have to, uh, yeah. May use your table the way that uh, it can um, correctly have the regional structure and what happens if you have like other countries. So in a graph database, you just link these different entities and you're done. And you can do that with the anatomy because you have this property that uh, any entity can ref any other entity. And it's also, it can also be considered as a columnar DB because uh, when you have a columnar DB, what you want is to like store all the values of the column together for quick access of uh, all these values, often for analytics. So during analytics, they only need two, three columns of, the, of a table, and, uh, but they need everything in the column, so they store the data in a way that all the data of the column are stored together. And in Datomic, you have that because you have the, uh, the AVT uh, index, which starts by indexing the, part, the, the attributes first. And the attributes is really like uh, a column in a relational database. So you get also uh, the same properties as a columnar database. So when you write data, uh, you don't use the same API as when you, when you read. That's also a, a detail, but it's different from uh, from uh, SQL, where you use SQL to update and to uh, and to read. In Datomic, you use um, use transactions, and uh, transaction in Datomic is just data. It's a set of datums that you want to send uh, transactionally to the to the server. And the difference between um, Datomic and transactional databases is that. Um, in closure, these transactions are just uh, the closure data structure. They are not strings. So it makes it easier when you code to like uh, build this data, this uh, transaction uh, programmatically, instead of building uh, strings. So the syntax, well, I mean, I'm not, uh, I don't think I really need to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, this is the closure vector, and uh, you just say, with this key all, I want to add this entity ID, this attribute, and this value in this database. So concretely, it gives you this. You call the function transact to a connection, which is the database. And here, you want to enter this to, uh, this to that open. OK, that's the same thing, but just another way to write it using, instead of using vectors, you, this time you use a hash map for a map in uh, Enclosure, and you, and the only thing is that you write a bit less because you don't duplicate the entity ID on each row. Yeah, and um, now, uh, with regard to reading query, um, you have four powerful ways to uh, to query the data in uh, Datomi. So you have the what's called the query API, which is data log, the entity API, and the pool API. Data log, have, uh, has anyone ever uh, heard of it, used it? So it's, a, it's an old language, actually. It, Datomic, they didn't invent anything, basically. They just took uh, 
what they thought was good ideas here and there, put it together, and made a, made a new database. So Datalog is an old language from the, from the 80s. It's a subset of uh, Prolog. And, um, and it's also based on the EAVT principle, the triple that you have in, the, in Datomy. So typically, is an example of a query done with Datalog. If you have these facts in the database, write a query, you say find, that's a variable, and find the value for this variable where, and here you have a, you have a triple. So the system is going to try to uh, pattern match your clause, your query, into the rows into the database. So here you're basically asking, find me all the entity IDs, because it's, uh, this position is the entity ID. Find me all the entity IDs. Uh, with age of 42, and in the database we have two, Fred and Ethan, and that's what you get as a result. A slightly more complex query. Um, this time we have two clauses, this one and this one, and it's basically doing the same thing, but with the hand. We have to find um, in the database an entity that has age 42, and for these entities that have age 42, find out what they like. So it gives Fred, and Fred likes pizza, Fred pizza, and then tell them the sushi. Uh, the advantages of Datalog over SQL, uh, in Datalog you can, you can have recursion, which is really hard to do with, uh, with SQL. Like some queries, you can solve them in three lines of database uh, of uh, data, and it will take you a lot more uh, lines of SQL to solve it. Especially when your your data is uh, is hierarchical in a parent-child relationship, that's really good for doing uh, recursivity. And and in uh, data log, it's really easy to to query uh, to query data this way. Also, if you're working with Clojure, it's a uh, it has a very strong uh, connection with Clojure. We've seen that everything is really the, the, the query. You write it as a, as a Clojure data structure. So it's considered as a as data for Clojure. So, it, so it's basically not an ORM. You're not trying to map an object to a row in the database. You're trying to map um, the triple in your data log query to other triple in your, uh, in your datomic database. So there is no mismatch, and you don't have like, uh, what you have is uh, when you work with Postgres, where if your query is really complex, then you restart to writing SQL by end. <laughs> and it's also powerful because you can mix, um, you can add, uh, you can call, you can create cl clauses which contains closure functions, or the application functions that you that you have in your application. So you can also add uh, clauses with that, so. Another way to query the data, it's called the, uh, the entity API. Here basically what you want is to just retrieve uh, information about an entity. So in this example I have one entity, 42, and if I use Java with Datomic, I can call add the DB reference, and I'm asking for entity 42, I get the reference to the entity, and then I can ask uh, the attribute of the entity, one of the attributes email, and it returns me the, the email. So Datomic is not only for closure, it's, uh, it works on the GBM. So any GBM language for sure can, um, can uh, share the properties that uh, closure has. So Java, Kotlin, people are using it with Kotlin. And if uh, use for info, enclosure, the same thing as was done in Java at the bottom. Now another interesting way to query the data is the, what they call the full API. Uh, it lets you basically describe the shape of what you want to retrieve. And um, it's really like a GraphQL. It's exactly the same concept. And uh, whereas uh, for the entity API, I was like doing like uh, give me Jane and then give me the attribute of Jane. It's a lot more imperative. The, the pull API, it's a lot more declarative. It's really, uh, it's really like the rough 
So here's an example. You have the data in the database, and you can query this data telling you. So this query uh, says, I would like the attribute name of the entity two. So that's David. So we very good to have name David. And also I would like to find uh, something about the attribute father, father of uh, entity two. So the father is entity number one, so it's this one. And I would like to find the name of that entity and the name is So if you've used GraphQL, then I think you will, uh, you will see this pattern, you will recognize this pattern. Uh, and lastly, time travel is possible. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so you can travel in the past. Because of this property of immutability, you have everything, the full story of the database. Uh, so, it, um, so basically you can go back in time and say I would like the version of the database as of this date or as of this transaction ID and what it gives you back is a, is a, is a version of the database of that time which is an immutable value and if you carry it then you get the result of what was there at the, at the time in the back. Uh, you can also query into the future that's, uh, that may sound a bit weird, but well, it's basically the idea that you, you can, uh, you can specu speculatively write into the database, and after you're done querying, then everything will be erased. You're just saying like, oh, give me, right now, give me one instance of the database as it is now, and I'm gonna do some queries, but they will not impact the, the globality of the database, only me will see the impact of the, of the things that I insert now. And then when I'm done, uh, what I just added will be, will be removed. And for the rest of the world, nothing has changed. It's useful with tests. A lot of people are using it for, for tests. It's very easy to clone a, a database database and to get it into memory. And then do your test on uh, read uh, what you have in prod, actually, without affecting prod. Yeah, uh, the atomic is proprietary, but there is a free version, if you want. Um, but also now they are starting to have open source alternatives, and uh, there are two projects, DataScript and DataHype. So DataScript is, uh, is meant only for working uh, in, a, in a browser. It's an in-memory DB, like Datomic, but it's not durable. So it's, it's used for uh, SPA, single page application, where you want to, you, where you have a lot of state to manage and you would like to have the data, uh, some kind of a database to back up your state, then you can use the uh, data script. But once you leave the, the page, when you're, once your application uh, ends, then the, the database is, uh, is left. It's not durable. And Datomic, you cannot use it in a browser. It's a, it's a GBM. Uh, the GVM tool. And there's the, this other project that I, that's what we are working on at uh, Lambda Forge. And it's, uh, it's actually, they took the code base of DataScript and they added this other project called the Hitchhiker Tree, merged them together and they uh, obtained um, a durable database system contrary to DataScript, which was not durable. You have the checker tree, which is the implementation of uh, BTree, which allows you to save uh, data on, uh, <coughs> on, on disk. And it's a, a really high performance implementation of, uh, of a BTree. So mixing the two together, um, you have data high. So it's person, persistent, durable, like Datomic. And, uh, but for now, the persistence in the browser, where, uh, which uh, DataScript cannot do, we don't have it yet. Uh, there are people working on it. And in the future, uh, we also would like to have uh, some reactive version where if you have some changes on the data on the, uh, on the server, they are automatically replicated on the, on the client. And for those into blockchain, there is also 
people are working on a project called Datopia, which is a blockchain that will be built on top of, uh, of data, not built on top of uh, just a chain of, uh, of, um, of data, like in, uh, uh, what's the name, uh, Bitcoin. Here you really have, uh, the, you have a full database that can back your, uh, your blockchain. Okay, so uh, to summarize, I think what, what really makes uh, Datomic special, at least for me, is that when you have this property of immutability plus the universal schema, the triple, and because of that, because of the association of the two, you have, uh, you have all these interesting properties that, uh, that I've described. And uh, yeah, so I've already mentioned this a bit. It's interoperable with Java, it's a GVM project. If you want to work with JavaScript, use DataScript. And there is even somebody who wrote a gem uh, for Ruby and Rails. He was the one who were interested. Um, mostly here I've described the um, Datomic when you use it uh, on your machine with the server, but there is now a version of Datomic which is cloud ready. Yeah, that's it. So, well, I hope you, uh, it was interesting and maybe uh, I hope that you try uh, Datomic. Or one of its open source versions. Each time you're going to read, actually, you're going to go through this. Uh, let me show you. Okay. Basically, this is the system that does this. You write, send it to the storage, and there is a mechanism to push the, oh, no, new, new yeah, the new data goes back into this cache. Okay. And there's all, I don't know really the details, but there's all, a lot of caching going on because it's immutable, it's really easy. Okay. And so at the same time, if it's becoming too big, then they just drop uh, the part that they think you don't need right now uh, back into disk. All oh, right. Okay. And then right. when you do the query that needs the data, it's going to read it again, put it in cache, and until the cache is filled again. And once again, when it's filled, it's going to start dropping the list you as the image. And so, like, if you've got, you know, many people updating or um, changing the data, yeah. Um, how, how does it handle those type of collisions? Like a well, I guess it's because of the Unix thread on the writer. Okay. You don't have conflicts. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You just yeah. Sequentially add everything that comes from anywhere. First, first copy person. and copy it back. Yeah. Okay. So it could technically happen that someone is updating the same value and because this person has a slower internet connection than this one, then uh, this one updates, this one updates, and then they update the same value, but they receive the history, they receive the newest value. You say, okay, the value is this. What? I just changed it to this. Uh, but in fact, in fact, what would happen is that the first one would come down and they would be updated again. Yeah. The other person. yeah. I mean, this this is probably an example where I shouldn't use this. I'm just like sort of trying to make a really tough example for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but like, the the thing is, yeah, it's gonna linear, linearize everything on the on the back end, and so you're never gonna get uh, at least you're never gonna get a consistency in the sense that maybe you'll get back uh, you, you have a conflict, but you'll get back. Uh, the newest. Yeah. No, the, the single thread actually does solve a lot of yeah, it does, issues, yeah. right? I mean, it sounds like a weird way to solve things, but... Yeah. From a performance perspective. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's because...
because there's the linearization on the on the back end, uh, you you already get you, you always get the copy that's on the on the back end actually. Yeah. Before I answer, you're changing data that was scaling that much. I mean, there's always a way to overcome that by updating the data. I just stop changing the schema. The thing is, um, uh, the reason I'm asking is that because I'm working on a project that has kind of teaching it. That's like, you know, so that's yeah. Like but the thing is, you, you should always have your, uh, your schema aligned with your data, right? So you change the schema, you update the data so that, uh, that it's aligned. Mm -hmm. And when you go back, you'll get a new version of the database where you had the old schema, but the old data. So you maintain consistency this way. Well, the, the scanner really is just another... It's <laughs> another data. Another data, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's really all the story, actually. Actually, you can't transact the schema if the current basis of the, of the, of the data does not match the schema. It will fail. So, so mm -hmm. you, heard, you first have to add facts that bring your data in the shape of the schema you want to transact. And once all the data is, is matching that schema, you, you can, you can uh, transact mm -hmm. the, the schema change. And, yeah. and then indeed the database, it's very, uh, it does not cost anything to get the database at the current uh, state. So when you create back in time, you, you also get indeed the schema that was um, in active well, at that time. No more versions. <laughs> but then you also have the same problem that you might have with Mong MongoDB, where you have various forms of your data in the database. Yeah. And when you query, yeah. query it, depending on how you write it, you might miss yeah. facts. Quite popular in the closure world. Yeah. I, I understand. Uh, but the closure uh, world is not very popular. So, <laughs> <laughs> so is it starting to like spread out? Honestly, honestly yes, I don't think so. No. no. It, it seems very tied to closure, right? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's the same in Voltaire. It's basically the same idea of immutability taken from closure into. Database space. And even the way you said that the, the data structures are native to Clojure, so you don't have yeah. to do yeah. but, but still you can use this with Java uh, quite easily. Mm -hmm. But then you have to resort to strings in yeah. the Right, right. I think it's still maybe too much of a shortcut to discard the interest of the... And I'm not saying you're doing it, but uh, probably lots of people discard the ID just because they think it's tied to Clojure. But the immutable database is actually something that could be useful in any language. No, no, it sounds, it sounds very interesting, but I guess if you're using Clojure, you would have the additional advantages of, of, its, of you know, translating. But if you're not using Clojure, it's like, uh, you're, if you're using Postgres, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Except that you don't have the ORM, okay, yeah. You have to really resort to strings. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of problems with ORMs, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, because there is this, um, there is the colon uh, transaction ID. That is automatically. Yeah, when it's inserted, it gives a transaction ID plus the time when it was stored. But and when you want to get the timestamp, th then you have the, uh, you have an API. Okay. Like for instance, database DB as of, and you give a time, and it's gonna uh, return the state of the database at that time. Yeah. 